and we are back with section 4.3 quadratic functions and their properties we are going to start by talking about vertex form for a parabola or a quadratic function so the parent function for quadratics is y equals x squared or f of x equals x squared but we're going to put our transformations um, all together in this and We'll start here with a vertical stretch, which is going to be a number that is multiplied out in front of the x squared. Now, you don't necessarily have to have these parentheses unless you have something inside the parentheses. So you may see it without parentheses, like 7x squared, or you may see it with parentheses, like 7 times x plus 4 in parentheses squared. But either way, if there is a number that is not being squared with the x, it is a vertical stretch or compression. So what we're doing is we're multiplying the height of each ordered pair by that number. So if your number is bigger than 1, that means the height of each ordered pair will get taller, which makes it stretch vertically or it could be a vertical compression. If A is between zero and one. So always your stretch and compression is going to be a positive number, but you will definitely see negative numbers out front. If it is negative out front, then it's going to be a reflection across the X axis. These are the same as uh, we had done in previous chapters. So nothing new at this point. Then if we have a number added afterwards, again, not in with the x squared, this is going to shift up if that number is positive and shift down if that number neg is negative. Anything we have inside the parentheses that's being squared along with the x is going to be a shift left and right. So they usually write x minus h squared so just know that it shifts if it if it does say minus like x minus 4 that's going to be a shift right and a shift left if it is um, positive or added in there so that's our vertex form and we're going to use uh, these transformations to graph. So our parent function for the quadratic family, uh, y equals x squared, that has a vertex at 0, 0. Right there. And then from that vertex, the pattern to graph is to go over 1, up 1. So over 1, up 1 on both sides and then over 2, up 4, again on both sides, and then we would go over 3, up 9, and that pattern continues, so we could go over 4, up 16, over 5, up 25, etc, etc. And then the graph is that U-shaped parabola, when you're graphing these, make sure that you're graphing accurately. I want to see um, where those ordered pairs are, that you're following that pattern, and that you're getting those points in there accurately. Now we're going to talk about a horizontal stretch and compression. This is not a favorite topic for like Algebra 2. Um, I'm not, I think you might have done them in pre-calc, but I'm not certain about that. But I know in Algebra 2, they just kind of get avoided. Horizontal stretches and compressions are going to be inside with the x being squared. 
So it's going to be like a number times your x and then squared. So inside there. And if it is a stretch, that number is going to be between 0 and 1. And if it's compression, that number is going to be bigger than 1. So basically what's happening is your x coordinates are being divided by that number that's inside there. So if that number is like 7, then our x's are going to be divided by 7. So your x values move in towards the y-axis. If that number is like a half, then we would divide all of our um, overs, like over 1, over 2, over 3. Divide that by a half, which is the same as multiplying by 2. So all of my x-coordinates get stretched out that way. So the way that we make that happen is with our pattern. So we will go over our normal things, except for we have to divide by that number that's out in front. Or multiply by its reciprocal. And then that doesn't change our ups. The ups will stay the same unless we also have, you know, a vertical stretch or compression. So that's how we make those happen. Okay, each of these parabolas, um, they have symmetry, but not necessarily about an axis. They all have symmetry um, across a vertical line that goes through the vertex. So this is going to be a vertical line that goes through the x-coordinate of the vertex. And since it's a line, it has to be in the form x equals some number. And that number is going to be the x-coordinate of the vertex. What is next? We have x-intercepts. Okay. X-intercepts, um, you might have one x-intercept or two x-intercepts or no x-intercepts. So there may be 0, 1, 4, 2. So here's how that plays out. If we don't have any x-intercepts, that would mean uh, our parabola never crosses the x-axis. So it might be up above like that, or it might be down below if it opens down. If we have one x-intercept, then our parabola would come down and just the vertex would touch on the x-axis. And if we have two x-intercepts, that's kind of what we're more used to seeing. The vertex will dip down below, or it could open this direction as well. But it'll cross through the x-axis twice. To find the x-intercepts, um, it's going to be the same way that we always have for other functions. You're going to replace the y value with 0. So another way to say that is to set the function equal to 0. And then we solve for x. Uh, sometimes, well, if your function is in vertex form, like we have here, then we can use the square root method. And we'll get to practice that here in a little bit. And again, even though my math lab doesn't always make you put your intercepts in ordered pair form. I would really prefer that to happen, so I'm going to say it must be in the form of a number comma zero. That's going to keep you straight when you are uh, doing, you know, getting ready for tests and whatnot. Y-intercept. In the y-intercept there can be only one. That's otherwise it won't be a function. So to find it we are going to sub in zero for x and those have to be in the form 0 is going in for x, so 0, common number. Maximums and minimums. So these little parabolas 
are going to have either they're going to open up like this, open up, or they're going to open down. So remember that what makes the parabola open down is if it's reflected over the x-axis. So if that number out front, the a value is negative, then you're going to get a parabola that opens down like that. But if a is positive, you're going to have a parabola that opens up. If the parabola opens up, then we have a minimum value. If the parabola opens down, then we have a maximum value. And the value of the maximum or minimum is the y value. So remember when we talk about the value of a function, it's the y value um, that we're talking about. So the maximum or minimum value is the y value of the vertex. So the vertex tells us two things. I mean, it tells us where the parabola is going to start from, but remember it tells the x-coordinate tells you the axis of symmetry or line of symmetry. Now the y value tells us the maximum or minimum value. So when we're looking at the range, the range is going to be very closely related to the vertex. Because if we have a minimum value like this, then the lowest value we'll have is going to be the value of the minimum the y value of the vertex, and then the uh, parabola continues up towards infinity. But if we have a maximum, like this one, then the parabola goes from negative infinity up to that maximum value. So this guy will be negative infinity up to the maximum value, which again is the y value of the vertex. And the domain. The domain, please don't ever, ever miss the domain of a parabola, because remember that the only domain restrictions that we have to be careful for right now are if we have variables in the denominator or variables inside an even indexed radical. This has neither of those two things. So that is going to make our domain all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. Okay, let's look at a an equation that's already in standard form, I mean vertex form, not bad, vertex form, and we're going to list the transformations, and then we're going to graph it accurately over here. So it's already in vertex form. It's important to be able to recognize when something's in vertex form and when it's not. If your parabola is not in vertex form, we can make it be in vertex form, and I will show you how to do that later. Okay, so the transformations we have. Uh, the number that is out front here, that is a vertical stretch of 2. And what that vertical stretch is going to do is it's going to change the pattern uh, when I graph. So instead of my parabola going over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, like that, it is going to go over 1, up, we'll go ahead and write the normal pattern. We have to stretch each of the ups by multiplying them by 2. So a vertical stretch changes the pattern. And this is our first transformation, vertical stretch of 2. So that's going to be my symbol for a transformation. Just so you know uh, what transformations are, if you're asked to list the transformations, that's one, vertical stretch of 2. And then we also have, as a transformation, Inside with the x, we have adding 1. So that transformation is a shift. Remember, if it's added, it goes to the left. So it's going to shift left one unit. 
And then after the parenthesis, we have another transformation there. That is a shift down by four units. Okay, now these two together, the shift left and shift down, they are going to move the vertex. So we have to look at these together to be able to move the vertex. Now normally, remember the vertex is at zero, zero, but if I'm going to shift it left and down, shifting left one unit would make it to negative one, shifting down four units would make it negative four. So the vertex is now going to start at negative one, negative four, and I'm going to use the pattern to graph. So I will go over one, up two, over one, up two, and on the other side as well, and then over two, up eight. Remember when you go over two and up eight, you start back from the vertex. So we go from the vertex over two, up eight. And then we would go over three, up 18, which would be up here somewhere. One, two, three, so there's four, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We'll go with roughly there. Then we're gonna connect these dots in a way that makes a smooth curve, not like pointy, not like an X. And we always want to draw like off the graph paper we're provided so that we you know, make it, uh, so you can tell that the parabola keeps on going. So we wouldn't want to just stop like at those dots there. The line of symmetry, that was another thing we talked about. The line of symmetry or axis of symmetry, those are the same thing. And remember that that was a vertical line that goes through the vertex, and so it has to be x equals, and then we choose the x coordinate of the vertex, so x equals negative 1. What else can we do with these x-intercepts? x-intercepts. So for x-intercepts, remember we're going to set the y value equal to 0. So I'm going to put 0 equals 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 4. Now here's where I was saying to use the um, square root method because there is a squared thing and no just regular x term. So to do that, we want to isolate the squared thing. So I'll add that 4 to both sides and divide both sides by 2. So now I have 2 equals x plus 1 squared. Then we will take the square root of both sides. Okay, please remember that when you take the square root of both sides, this square root of 2 has to have a plus or minus attached to it. So now I have plus or minus square root of 2 equals x plus 1. Subtract your 1 over uh, from both sides. That is going to go before the plus or minus. So we get x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. Those are going to be our x-intercepts. We have two of them. We have negative 1 plus the square root of 2, comma, 0. And we have negative 1 minus the square root of 2, comma, 0. Now, if you were going to be using those x-intercepts for graphing purposes, you would need to get um, decimal approximations. So I would need to take negative 1 plus the square root of 2, which is 0.4, that's this guy, and negative 1 minus the square root of 2, negative 2.4, which is that one. Let's talk about the y-intercept. Remember, y-intercepts, there can be only one y-intercept, otherwise it won't be a function. Uh, the y-intercept, we're going to put in 0 for the x value. So we'll have y equals 2 times 0 plus 1 squared minus 4. So that'll be 2 times 1 
because 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1. So we're going to get y equals negative 2. So our y-intercept is 0, negative 2. Look at that. There it is, 0, negative 2. Then we need to say, do we have a max or a min value? Well, since this parabola opens up, we have a minimum value. And the minimum value is the y value of the vertex. We know the vertex is 1, negative 4, so the minimum value is negative 4. Now let's talk about domain and range. Remember, uh, domain is the same for every parabola ever invented. So for the domain, it's going to be negative infinity to infinity. And the range is related to the minimum value. It's going to be from negative 4 up to infinity. And the negative 4 has a bracket since we definitely have an ordered pair there.